face that this world has forgotten. Hmm. What is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was It Really Better? Now, this episode is a bit more special, and I'm actually going to introduce a very good friend of mine called Jolt from Token Minorities, who has been a part of this before, and he is joining me today to be able to actually determine which of these two are really better. So, hit it off, Jolt. What's going on, everybody? Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and of course, I want to thank Skyrander once again for having me on for another episode of Who Was Really Better. If you want to check out my first appearance on his channel, it would have been on the Scrafty vs. Pangoro Clash, but today, we're going to actually be talking about Hippowdon vs. Donphan and trying to determine who was really better between these two Pokemon. So let's kick this off by taking a look at Hippowdon. So Hippowdon is rocking a couple pretty cool abilities in Sand Sandstream and Sand Force, making it a, an essential component to any Sand team, quite honestly. Also rocking the base stats of 108 HP, 112 attack, 118 defense, 68 special attack, but we're not really going to talk about that, 72 special defense, and 47 speed. So a Powdon over, just overall is a very well-rounded tank and a well-rounded wall. It can be used as a special wall, as a physical wall. It can do a lot of things really well on the defensive side. And with that base 112 attack, it's actually not bad offensively either. Although its move pool does leave a little bit to, de to be desired, but I believe Sky Raider is going to talk about that later. But now let's take a look at Donphan as well. As Donphan has a couple pretty cool abilities, most notably Sturdy. That's the one you're always going to see, quite honestly. Every now and then you'll see someone be that guy and try to run Sand Veil on their Donphan, but Sturdy is more often than not what you're going to find, and it has a pretty nice stat distribution as well. Having 90, uh, a 90 base stat in HP, 120 in attack, 120 in defense, 60 in special attack, again, not really worth mentioning, uh, 60 in special defense, and 50 in speed. So it really does have a similar stat distribution to a Powdon um, overall. However, I will say that a Powdon is certainly the better mixed wall of the two as Donphan's special defense is much lower at 60 compared to a Powdon 72 and Donphan's HP is lower at 90 compared to a Powdon's 108. And that's very true, and consider the given circumstance here, due to extra HP from Hippowdon, it's very easy to say straight out the bat that while Dawn has more defense compared between them, the more HP definitely does entice here to forward that feeling that Hippowdon is defensively more capable than Hippowdon fan. Though, it should be stated here that we have a speed tier that is higher on Dawn we have an attack stat that is higher on Dawn fan, so Dawn fan feel more of an offensive tank, while a on definitely feel the role of being that defensive tank, if anything. Now, we should definitely talk about the ground typing and why it benefits them both so much. Ground typing as a soul typing is not too shabby, actually. It's definitely one of the stranger typing combination because you have immunity in what you hit super effectively in uh, electric. You resist, of course, lies of poison and rock. And are weak to, of course, ground, ice, and water. So a very balanced overall, which makes the typing itself fairly defensively capable. A lot of hits will hit you neutrally, and they both solve that issue quite well due to the high defense that here. It should be stated, though, we didn't want to talk about the special attack here, but it should be stated the opponent has a higher special attack, and while it doesn't necessarily matter, it is an interesting aspect to talk about, because it does mean that the power can fill a different role if it is forced to. Now, other than that, as stated, their abilities are really nothing to talk about. Hippodon is a crucial part of every Sand team, but outside of that, Sand Force definitely isn't something that is helping all that much, and it's definitely too slow to pull anything off with that ability alone. So Sturdy is the most desirable one, making Jonathan the superior between these two, though it should be said that Hippodon is better with other Pokemon that are benefiting from the Sand itself. So with this out of the way, I do believe most of us really can consider that Hippodon overall here are the more desirable between these two when it comes to the defensive aspect and often filling out a bit of a physical role that we have yet to actually discover. So with that said, we're actually going to talk about their move pool. Now, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the offensive move they both get because they fill the same kind of role here. You know, they get the relevant moves in Earthquake and Bulldoze and, of course, Earth Power if you want to capitalize on that. Other than that, we have on the Rock side Stone Edge, we have Rock Slide, we have Rock Tomb. Both can capitalize on that really well and together with the likes of Super Power as possible to move and also Iron Tail, which makes them both fairly decent as possible C users with that in mind. They also get the Elemental Fangs between one another 
And you should also be said that what statured East Pokemon really well are the Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks really is what's capitalized on a possible good defensive ground type to set up rocks and also both get Roar able to, of course, face out possible matchup. And from actually this reveal of Virtual Console's Generation 2, Donphan is now able to get Curse, which is something Hippowdon has to have it, had an edge on for quite some time, now to both get it, which is quite interesting for Donphan's benefiting, but outside of that, we're just going to talk about what makes them unique and start out with, of course, the Hippowdon. Now, the biggest edge Hippowdon have here is that it is one of the few grand types that have recovery in Slack Off. And while it doesn't sound too enticing, this is something that has Staturized Hippowdon to be one of the best defensive Pokemon in the whole game because it's mixed defensive, Arceus up there one of the best with a really high attack stat, and of course it's very high HP stat, making able to capitalize on its really good HP to be able to of course recover. Now with that said, Hippowdon has a pretty lacklustering move pool overall. While it isn't bad on its own, it definitely gets crunched over Jonathan. We also have the likes of the Whirlwind, uh, which is a bigger benefiting move than the likes of um, Roar, because it has a higher priority that we believe is minus five, while Roar is minus six. So if you're facing Pokemon who has a Roar, you'll be able to, of course, outspeed them. Outside of that, we have a Revenge and we have the Stockpile moves. Revenge is actually a decent capitalizing move since, of course, you are retaliating with that in mind. So it does emphasize to be of something more unique. And the last one that has Overheat Jonathan is actually Water Pulse. And that is pretty much it. Donphan has a lot more moves to be capitalized on, but Hippodon has the slack off. A slack off is the relevant move here because it does mean that it filled the defensive role perfectly over Donphan. So with that said, let's look at, of course, what Donphan gets over Hippodon. Now, when it comes to Donphan's fear moves, it's an interesting Pokemon on its own because this is a Pokemon that actually got a bit boosted by the sea moving collusion in this generation because it meant that I could hit that much more effectively towards more things because it has a really broad move pool. Now that said, it should definitely say that the Dolphin has Rapid Spin, which is something it has already found on. Rapid Spin and Stealth Rock is a very, very unique combination. Very, very few have perfected it as well as Dolphin has. The other one being Clay Duel and Sand Slash, and trust me, they do not do that as safely as Dolphin. And it has a lot to do with the filler moves in Knockoff, priority in Ice Shot, which is a very, very strong thing for a Pokemon with a low speed here to be able to actually outspeed something anyway. And outside of that, and really what makes this Pokemon interesting is that we have Heavy Slam and Head Smash. We have Never, we have Counter, Play Rough to be hit, of course, the likes of um, Dark types or possible Finding types. And when it comes to the two removes that really does push it over the edge is we have Bounce, which will be able to hit, of course, super effectively. Uh, the grass types you can enforce it out to get relies of gunshot and poison jab when we also have and this is really what push it over the edge for me at least seed bomb to be able to hit water types super effectively and does that really well uh, a very strange thing that we have from Fanfi is actually sham sham makes it so even the offensive threats can set up you can ruin their attack set and by default actually stall them out physically due to your high defensive stat now with that said though all these moves, are they capitalizing enough to make Dolphin better than Hippowdon? The tears suggest no, therefore I'll leave this dialogue for Jolt. So, if you think about their viabilities in, in uh, Jurat format, and even honestly in Smoke on Tears as well, I'm going to focus on Jurat format. Hippowdon is almost always restricted to being a wall. It's going to be a good wall, it'd be very good at walling things, especially in Gen 6, as that was when walls were more uh, prominent in draft play, but it was always in that defensive role. But if you look at something like Donphan, Donphan can be offensive and it can be defensive because Donphan's support move pool most notably rock polish makes it a huge threat offensively given the right setup it can also effectively use pinch berries because of its sturdy ability it can it's able to run things like a salic berry despite the fact that that really doesn't help its speed too much as base 50 is pretty low uh, the salic berry would be able to uh, at least boost its speed to a respectable amount um, but in addition to that don fan is still able to fill the roles that hippowdon can defensively because the don fan with an assault vest is able to still take hits very well on the special side and naturally can take hits very well on the physical side. I also have to give Donphan a slight edge due to its 
ability to run priority moves specifically ice shard as hippowdon does not have that as a possibility donvan is able to come in clutch with the ice shard but of course the one thing that we're not even mentioning at all is donvan's viability as a hazard remover that is one thing that hippowdon is not able to do at all hippowdon is only there to be a wall and to be a good wall donvan can be offensive it can be a hazard remover and it can just overall be a, a good component to any draft i would say uh, hippowdon it, it's uh, Hippowdon's a good wall for any draft, but Donphan is the dual threat that I've already mentioned. Now, another thing to talk about as well when it comes to these two Pokemon is their options in terms in terms of Z-moves. As uh, Like I already mentioned before on Hippowdon, it really doesn't have the best coverage. Its coverage options are pretty much exclusively Earthquake, Stone Edge, and the Elemental Fangs and Crunch as well. While Donphan has access to a lot of other stuff, including pretty much all of those, in addition to things like Ice Shard, like I already mentioned, also having, I believe, Head Smash for some extra damage, uh, Gyro Ball for some steel coverage if you really want something like that, and of course you have something kind of nice like Bounce, which could be a very, very scary Z-move on the Dawn Fan, as a lot of people like to switch in their grass types to ground types like Dawn Fan. If you are packing the Z-Crystal with the Flyinium Z, boosting that Bounce and turning that into a Supersonic Sky Strike, that might just be a KO, especially considering Dawn Fan's base 120 attack, as that is nothing to mess with. So I really do overall have to give the edge to Donphan on the basis of its potential Z moves with that Z balance being so clutch as well as just having more options to uh, abuse Z crystals. Another example being the poison jab that I never even mentioned, another solid way to deal with those potential grass types. Also having knockoff, another solid utility option. And I didn't even mention stealth rocks that Donphan does have. Of course, Paladon has those as well. The one downside as well that should be mentioned about Donphan is it doesn't have reliable recovery like Kapowdon, but that said, I do think that the pros outweigh the cons in favor of Donphan because of its versatility and its strength as an offensive option on any draft. So that's my two cents. Let's kick it back on over to Skyrander. And I fully agree here with you all also, and I really, really want to try to enforce why. Now, the easiest part of me is saying Hippowdon is a very, very good Pokemon. They both are. They both really are very good Pokemon. Hippowdon's viability lies in very much in its teammate and what it brings to the table with Sand in mind. But I believe individually, and even a part of that, just their viability on its own, Dolphin is able to do a lot more than being this just defined wall. While Hippowdon has perfected it, it is the only thing it will do. It will wall and it will phase out and it can hit decently hard actually with its earthquake and it has a very high attack as we already mentioned but Dolphin has the option to be so much more and the more we talk about it the more we kind of realize that yeah Dolphin might lack the recovery but in the end of the day does it really need it if it's able to KO what is in front of it and I just believe most people are just using Dolphin as a defensive role due to having both Stealth Rocks and Rapids been a miss out on this vast move pool and super effective hits that it just pull off so nicely in a league format that concept and ideals are just that much more better and we really had to reward that aspect when we talked about this and eventually we just decided that yeah Dolphin wins out of its option to be anything else but just a wall and um, it doesn't mean that Hippowdon is bad or anything like that because these Pokemon are really really good and it really took a lot of thought here and arguments to make the statement we ended up with but the C aspect of this really didn't force it had this been generation six no no way we would have said down was better but gen seven really did resolve a lot of issue more towards dolphin which definitely made it much much easier for us to say that dolphin here won this matchup so thank you joel for joining guys make sure to check out his channel which is going to be linked down below together with the episode of pangoro versus crafty one of our first episodes that did turn out really well and i'm really glad to have joel here again because joel is one of the best league players i know which only make this episode death much more interesting because he really brings a lot of fun and aspects to the tables that i possibly couldn't have done so many many thanks buddy and uh, for everybody else, make sure to check out next week where we're going to look upon the matchup that I've been wanting to do for uh, close to a year now, or at least, no, not a year, half a year. And uh, this is going to be our fifth celebration video. And this is a matchup that I really, really, really want to do for quite some time. 
And yeah, those are going to be these guys.